one of government's departments, the bond store, is in the process of becoming a company. Honorable Tokita Langi said the company is endorsed and in the process of establishment and the bond store will regulate under the same legislation as the Philatelic and Numismatic Corporation. Premier Talangi said government would like to see the bond store turnover at least increase double of its current revenue of $900,000 to $1.5 or $2 million. Even though government is increasing its trading power in the industry that it monopolizes, the previous wine importation license looks to revise as some private businesses appear to also have not followed the regulation of the license to only import wine. Premier Talangi said in his interview, any business who disobey the law and import outside of the stipulated license will be talked to. Reports of students urinating in bushes due to toilet facilities either being broken, blocked or unsanitary has raised some concerns for Niue High School. The issue was brought to the forefront following a visit by parliamentarians to a number of government departments and highlighted the disappointing condition of the new high school toilet facilities. The building has been labelled an eyesore and in need for a major overhaul to get it up to standard. However, such an exercise requires funds, funds which the department does not have. Sources say that the school parents and teachers association have taken the matter up presenting a cabinet paper to government. The Director of Education, Janet Tasmania, says that this issue should be considered a national problem as the school grounds are not only used by students but also the general public. Mrs Tasmania says that discussions have also been held with the Minister of Education and the Secretary to Government to find some alternative options but there also needs to be ongoing monitoring and funds to be allocated. According to the newer high school principal, James Poihanga, the toilets have now been closed and will not open for use until funds have been found to renovate and fix the damages. It's now time, he says, to find solutions that will benefit all those who use the facilities. Unfortunately, the minister and the secretary to the government are currently overseas, but in the meantime, the education department says the recommendation is that the toilets are to be hosed down and kept clean until funds become available. Government and reef shipping could open up other opportunities for Niue's shipping service if Niue Chamber of Commerce can find an alternative. The shipping contract between the Niue government and reef shipping allows revision every three years in which other shipping options could emerge soon if the Niue Chamber of Commerce and a select committee source a new alternative to the current arrangement. Premier Talangi said, government is awaiting new Chamber of Commerce if expressions of interest have been discussed. The contract between new government and Reef is due to expire in January of 2012. Other discussions is the flight service. Premier Talangi said government and the air service provider are trying to explore the best option of whether a second flight can begin with a three-month or 14-month trial with another alternative of an Australian flight into the island to increase development capacity. Vehicles made prior to 1995 are now being banned from being imported to the island. This latest move comes as the Environment Department attempts to strengthen and enforce Niue's ozone protection regulation from 2007. The reasoning behind this crackdown is twofold. Firstly, vehicles more than 15 years old can only be used a few years and will only add to the scrap metal waste on the island as well as containing chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs that have been attributed as contributing factors in ozone depletion. This week, members of the public were given a gentle reminder to ensure that vehicles imported do not have CFCs or to consider bringing in models made after 1996 or risk facing penalties. Extreme storm-like conditions over the weekend sent a few shockwaves across the island. Lightning struck some households more than others with reports of damage to some electrical appliances. Telecom Niue has stated that the lightning had affected some of their services, mainly landlines in the Alofi area and a few isolated cases in the outer villages. 
Telecom advised customers that in cases where lightning is a factor, it is best not to use phones or to switch them off to reduce the risk of damage. Customers were also reminded that if there are faults to their phones, to inform Telecom as soon as possible to ensure that their technical staff are able to repair the damage. And that concludes our news bulletin tonight. Do join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.